Hey people, this is Monster Dad, and welcome back to my channel and this Empyrean adventure. So last episode, we neutralised this abandoned factory, which was a bit of fun. And what I've done is gone through and looted the place. Um, I didn't do that on camera because it's it's not the most interesting thing looting things on camera. But I'll show you what I did and how I did it, and a couple of tips for. Uh, looting large POIs like this one because th there are a lot of cargo boxes and a lot of containers in a place like this. Um, so what I tend to do when I go through and loot a big POI is first of all I'll pop down a core. What's happened there? A bit of a light glitch there. It's weird. Um, so I popped down my core. I, I stuck it out here because when I do take the place apart, I'll do this bit last. That way, if I do need, if I do come across some blocks or com or piece of equipment that I want to take whole and, and complete, I can just quickly change my setting from public to private and take a whole block. And as I mentioned before, if you change your setting to public when you own something and then take it apart you'll get experience for it as I'm getting there um, but if you want to take the whole block okay oh, sorry I keep pressing the wrong button but if you want to take the whole blocks you change it to private okay good so looting a large POI um, what I tend to do is like I said, put my core down, then empty a couple of two or three cargo boxes, grab the cargo boxes complete, and then move them close to my vessel, in this case the Yellow Peril. What you can do then is if you press P and go to Devices, you can rename your three cargo boxes. Um, one tip though, if you look at something you want to see the device for, press P, that one will be highlighted. Uh, but before you can name something, and you name something by changing that there, you have to actually sort out the auto grouping so that it sorts into cargo boxes. If you just if you don't do that, it'll just stick at the end here, and you can't actually rename it. Um, so sort them first, get them into the cargo box group, and you can rename your cargo box. So I just re re rename them collection box one, two, and three. What you can do then, rather than walk around the the POI, you can just go to a cargo box access it, empty the stuff, when your inventory is full go into your cargo box, your collection box, access and then empty your equipment into there or your all the components or blocks into there and it's as easy as that but that's for the boxes like ammo boxes, cargo boxes that show on these devices the things that don't show on these devices are the, like the deco cargo blocks such as these wardrobes or these containers here. You actually have to go through the POI and loot those um, individually, things like these. But what you do is you go through, once your inventory is full you can just press P, go to your cargo collection boxes, access them and empty your inventory. You don't have to keep running back and forward from your vessel to do that. And then once you've got through the whole um, and the, the whole POI, you're good. You're good as gold. Um, the other thing that doesn't appear on this list are the alien loot containers. You know, like the, the grey, the red, the yellow, the purple containers, alien containers. They don't appear on there either. So you have to go around and, and loot those individually also. So that's how I loot a large POI. Saves an enormous amount of time. And if you park your vessel next to these cargo boxes, you can just simply empty this stuff straight into your inventory. Press P whilst looking at your um, vessel. And then empty the stuff straight into there. Uh, in this case, this stuff will go into my mobile contain mobile constructor.
And it's easy as that. Easy peasy. So there you go. Looting large POIs. So, yeah, we own this building now. And at some point I'll just go through and multi-tool all this down because most of this is hardened steel. Um, and we'll use all of this to eventually build our CV. Good. But in the meantime, I've been doing a little bit of building onto the settlement. Let's just jump in and head back. Let's pop some engines on and some lights since it's raining and stormy. Whee! I can remember my way back. Which way is it? It's that way towards the drone base, isn't it? Um, I'm going to adjust the construction of the yellow peril slightly soon as well. I'm going to add some um, some mining drills onto it. And the reason for that is not actually to go mining as such. Um, you can make mining HVs. Have oh, I completely missed our base? I have, haven't I? You'd think I'd know a way around by now. Um, yeah, you can build mining hover vessels, and there's some great ones on the workshop if you if you want to try out some. But I find them incredibly difficult and awkward to use. Um, the problem with hover vessels is, if I just go to this view, they they don't want to dip down, um, like nose down. And if you've ever played Space Engineers, you make a, a mining vessel for a planet. It's a it's actually a, an aircraft type ship, so you can you can put enough thrusters on it so that it can maneuver in, in lots of different directions, and then you can dig straight down vertically if you wish to. With the hover vessel, because it likes to hover, it doesn't want to stay nose down. So it's really awkward to mine resources from the ground with a hover vessel mining ship. Um, I find it, it is just as quick and just as easy to do it with your drone and with a tier 2 mining drill and that's how I tend to do it. However, if you're going to do a lot of building, which we're going to do here with concrete, you do need a lot of crushed stone. So what I'll probably do sometime in the next episode or so is add a few mining drills onto the front of this and go up to the side of one of those mountains and just dig into the mountain and then get crushed stone that way. That way the the hover vessel is remain remains horizontal whilst you're digging and it's much easier to use. So for the purposes of grabbing tons and tons of crushed stone, mining drills are great. For the purposes of mining resources, I don't really rate them. So I made a couple of little changes on here. Um, as you can see, our monument monstrosity that's that's covering our power generation in this uh, soon to be settlement. I changed the antenna on top to a more subtle little antenna that's not quite in your face. Um, I think it's a little bit better. Still not entirely satisfied with it but I think it's getting there. Over here I was racking my brains trying to think of where I wanted to put a hangar um, I also knew that I needed a landing pad of some sort. So I decided to kill two birds with one stone and do a hangar with a landing pad on top of it. Now obviously the, this landing pad is for a small vessel only. Um, when we make our CV, you know, I'll probably keep that in orbit and only bring it down to the planet when I need to bring it down to the planet. So we're going here. I haven't, put any, I haven't decorated inside or put any lights yet. I've got the, the basic outline of the structure. I am actually going to put windows on this side because we do have a bit of a view this way. I will flatten this area as well. I did a bit of terraforming to get this in. Um, so it, it comes out nice and flat here, so I thought it was an ideal place for the hover vessel to be stowed. So there's a hover vessel garage. I will put a repair bay in here as well. Um, probably two actually, because we can get two hover vessels in here. 
because if we want like a worker bee hover vessel where we can mine crushed stone um, we can go harvesting with the harvest module etc but we also want a combat hover vessel as well um, and I've got a, a design in mind for that one we'll start building that possibly in the next episode actually um, and then we can go out and start hitting some um, some more of the enemy POIs I also want to build a combat SV as well because um, the SV we've got at the moment the Mohawk is only really a scout it's only lightly armed and it wouldn't really stand up to being battered by a plasma cannon from an enemy POI not for very long anyway so yeah I've still got some decorating to do on this one but I think the, the general outline of it and the shape I'm quite happy with um, it's big enough for two hover vessels so I think we're good to go on that one um, I'll probably put a lift inside the back of there as well so we can get straight up to this area so this is our SV landing pad again I'll put a repair bay in this but I, I've got a few ideas how to make this one a little bit better as well I'm gonna probably raise this central area a little bit and make it look nice um, make it a bit more futuristic type landing pad get some good decor on it and and make it stand out as a, a good feature um, but I decided to put it down here sort of like tuck it away down the hill rather than have it um, inside the settlement because it's gonna be quite a tall structure and I didn't really want to take get it have it to have it take away from the the monument monstrosity that monstrosity that we have there because that's supposed to be the central feature for the the actual center settlement so yeah so that's why I tucked it away down here yeah I stuck a railing around because I fell off a couple of times um, which I tend to do yeah have still haven't built my house I still think it will probably be over there somewhere but there's a few things I need to start building here to make this place a bit more useful um, a little factory workshop type place medical bay or med center I should say my house um, a warehouse for storage we'll need lots of that because we're going to do lots of looting yeah and generally decorate it make it look nice and maybe a, one or two little residences and then what we'll do is we'll go and grab lots of alien crew and human crew and we'll populate the area and we'll also join it with some nice walkways to the for each of the buildings and, and a nice walkway over to the village as well so that becomes part of the actual settlement and like I said that will be the the indigenous quarter of the settlement uh, but on a sunny day at least you got a nice view down to the lake on a cloudy miserable foggy day like this not so much yeah it's coming along so there we go Whee! we've had a few more drone attacks and the Magino, Magino line has stood up really well um, hasn't taken any more damage like it did in the the other episode so I'm really pleased with how that's going the drones are still falling all the way through the earth so I'm not getting many components from those unfortunately um, bit of a shame yeah so I think what we'll do now is pop these drills on the front of the yellow peril and then test out our little um, mountain miner yeah mountain miner that sounds good so let's just quickly jump in pop up to our constructor better put the lights on because it's foggy Got our fog lights on head over to our temporary constructor which is over at the our defensive line eee. oh yeah haven't taken any damage from the drones but I've, I've created a bit of damage here once or twice from landing on the guns with the yellow peril as I just did then okay let's just quickly construct some drills what are they under what do they come under oh, do you know what have I, have I even unlocked them I might not have even unlock them I haven't locked any unlocked anything for a while let's see hover vessel drill module yeah always helpful if I unlock them yeah we can unlock the drill turret now as well which is great um, 
that's useful for taking uh, for for mining but the multi turret is the one I really want to get to that way we can take large POIs apart really quickly take a lot of energy but they they save so much time let's put these things on to construct that would be useful wouldn't it so drill module I reckon four of them should do it oh there's some lights from my base yeah four of them should be good so to prep that what I'll need to do is put it on disassemble so I get the whole block I'm going to take off the harvest module so we've already got our harvest cargo box there so that will also collect anything from the drill modules as well um, or from the drills so we'll stow our harvest module in the ammo box and when we swap them around we'll put our drills into the ammo box as well so we can always just quickly swap stuff around on the yellow peril when we need it and they should yeah it should be able to fit those four drills here nicely where should we put them um, I think probably that one there there and we probably just want to go there and there don't we yeah why is that one a different color I must have missed that hmm okay I might need to put another thruster on the back of this though as well because if we're going up to the mountain it's not very really good at getting up hills come on final one in the meantime we'll pop these three on so these are beasts They're pretty big one two we'll pop that one there and we'll put the last one above it come on come on it, it does this case sometimes when you go into a constructor it will sort of like pause on there it'll work it out eventually but sometimes if you move something within a constructor it sort of kicks it off again and gets it thinking again so let's get our last drill on boom we are now drilled up okay so let's oh that's put some weight on it that's really really slow now move it up a bit so where should we go uh, let's just go the other side of the engine compartment and let's go into this big mountain here I mean the cave that we dig out we can always use for something at some point as well can't we I guess so seems like a good enough spot so we just left mouse click and start drilling he says why am I sliding everywhere I think once we make a bit of a hole and we can get onto a flat area we'll we'll be golden come on come on it's a bit unstable I think um, I, I probably don't have enough thrust and probably don't have enough RCS on this now for what we're trying to do with it. Wow. It's really unstable. Is it collecting stuff? Let's have a look. What am I doing? I don't want to do that. I wanted to... Press P. Check the... Harvest cargo box. Yeah, it's collecting stone. It's just not doing a very good job at drilling. Probably need to play around with the stability of this one. But as you can see, even by this, just drilling into the side of a hill, it's it's a little bit awkward. Um, I could probably do a lot more RCS on this to keep it more stable and a bit more thrust. But they're really awkward to use, I, I find. Um, and I don't really like using them but for the purposes of drilling crushed stone they work fine wow 
it's all over the place. All over the place. I mean, if you built a small hover vessel with one of these drills on, you could use it as like a worker bee if you wanted to build a base inside a mountain. Um, it would be a lot more stable because you've got... Uh, because you have only one drill on it. So what's happening with this now? I seem to be stuck. All over the place, this thing. This is how you do not make a mining ship. So that's the lesson for the day. How to not make a working mining ship. <laughs> Let's have a look at what it's collected. Yeah, tons. So you can collect crushed time really quickly. I've actually fell off the side of the mountain now in this now. So yeah, I need to go back to the drawing board with this one. Add more thrust, add more RCS, and then it should be a bit more stable, and then we'll be able to do what we need it to do. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go and park this in its new hangar. And I think we'll probably call it an episode there. A bit short of an episode this time, but I just wanted to show a couple of things. Looting the bit large POI. How not to make a hover drill ship. I can hardly fly this now because of the weight that's on it. <laughs> there we go. Come on, in you go, in you go. There we go. Locked in place. Yeah. Okay. Some work to do on that to make it a bit more efficient. But yeah, you get the idea. Stick some drills on the front of one, get a cargo harvest box, and you can collect a ton of stone if you're going to make a lot of stuff out of concrete. Um, so there, there you go. So we'll pop the pair, yellow pair out of the way. I'm going to run over to the village, grab the SV and bring that over here. Might as well put that on the landing pad. Um, and I'll see you guys in just a moment before we end the episode. Later! Okay, welcome back. So I've got the Mohawk. Oh, I forgot how quickly that accelerates upwards. And might as well pop this straight onto here. Since that's why we made it. For some reason the landing pads aren't working on the on the Mohawk, so I need to have a look at that at some point I think. Let's power off. Okay, so at least we've got somewhere to park our vehicles now. Um, we'll get a repair bay on that and be able to place to repair them as well. So we're beginning to get a semblance of, of a base set up. Uh, so we've got defence, hangar, landing pad, monstrosity, we need somewhere to live and somewhere to work. Okay, I'll call it there. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please press the like button. Please subscribe for more episodes. It really helps the channel grow. And I will see you later.